Welcome to the Talking Table, Session 1, IVF. Developmental biology has shown its use when it comes to battling infertility. From IVF to IUIs, many technologies have been produced to help men and women all over the world. These technologies are called Assisted Reproductive Technologies, or ART for short. Today, we will be focusing on in vitro fertilization, or IVF. But before we do that, let's understand the meaning of infertility itself. Infertility is a disease related to the reproductive system, where a person does not get pregnant after 12 months or more of regular, unprotected sexual intercourse. Infertility can be caused by both the male or the female. Male infertility can be caused by abnormal sperm production or function due to undescended testicles, genetic defects, health problems such as diabetes, or infections such as chlamydia, gonorrhea, mumps, or HIV. While for female infertility, it can be caused by problems with ovulation, damage to the fallopian tubes or uterus, or problems with the cervix. Age can also contribute to infertility because, as a woman ages, her fertility naturally tends to decrease. However, in one-third of infertile couples, the problem is with the man. Now, ART procedures are medical procedures to address infertility. ART refers to the treatment of manipulating the gonads to increase the chance of pregnancy. ART does not include the treatment which only sperm are handled from the sperm donor or the pill intake to stimulate egg production without being retrieved. In conclusion, the treatments that are considered as ART are the ones that have the sperm and egg handled in vitro. ART is applicable to couple with sperm issues. It happens when the sperm has difficulty in fertilizing the egg. Ovulate infrequently women. It happens because it increases the odds of a successful pregnancy for each cycle. Unexplainable infertility couple. Art can circumvent many common but difficult to diagnose problems. Pregnant without partner and also failure in other treatment. This when the couple have tried another treatment such as hormone treatment, clearing blocked tubes, treating underlying medical condition, but it doesn't work. There are several types of art, such as intrauterine insemination, or IUI, which placing sperm inside a woman's uterus to facilitate fertilization. The second type is gametes intrafallopian transfer, or GIFT, which removing the egg from the ovaries and place it on the fallopian tubes along with the man's sperm. The third type is ovulation induction, or OI, which taking hormone medication to develop more than one follicle and the couple will do the intercourse during the egg releasing. And last but not least is in vitro fertilization, or IVF. IVF or in vitro fertilization uses a combination of medicine and surgical procedures to help the sperm fertilize the egg and implant the fertilized egg in the uterus. There are two types of IVF. Conventional IVF, which is the procedure where the egg and the sperm are placed in the petri dish, and intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI, which is a procedure where a single sperm cell is injected directly into the cytoplasm of an egg. The history of IVF In July of 1978, Louis Brown was born in Oldham, England as the first baby to ever be born through IVF. The pioneers Robert Edwards and Patrick Steptoe were behind this success, which evoked attention all over the world. Initially, however, many colleagues as well as voices in the general public were critical. It had taken 102 IVF treatments to achieve this first pregnancy. Between 1978 and 1982, the two teams in Malmö and Yetobol were intensively 
The World Congress on Invertility in Berlin in 1981 saw presentations from Swedish representatives from both Malmö and Jettebol. The IVF team from Malmö lectured about embryo development of IVF and the group from Jettebol showed a film showing the first stages of cell division of a fertilized egg. The film had been created in collaboration with the world-renowned photographer named Leonard Nelson. For many years, it was only possible to receive IVF treatment in Malmö and Yetabol by public or state-owned caregivers. For a few years in 1980s, the waiting period to receive an IVF treatment was seven years. There were not yet any private clinics. The first private IVF clinic in Stockholm was Sofia Hammett, which opened in 1985. In 1986, the first private clinic in Yetobo, Fertility Centrum, was opened by Matt Swickland. Hawk and Ramsby and Per Sundström opened Krakliniken in Malmö at the same year. Today, IVF is the most important method for treatment of infertility. In 2010, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to Robert Edwards for the development of in vitro fertilization. There are several steps in the in vitro fertilization. The first step is the ovulation induction process. In this process, the fertility medication is taken for several months to mature the woman's egg and make sure it is ready for maturation. Regular ultrasounds or blood tests are performed in this process to measure the hormone levels and track the egg production. <laughs> the second step in IVF medication is egg retrieval. The mature eggs from the previous step will be taken out of the woman's body. This is a minor surgical that will be done in the doctor's office or fertility clinic. Firstly, the doctor will give the woman medicine to help her relax. A thin hollow tube will be put into her vagina until it reaches the ovary and follicle. The needle is connected to a suction device that will pull the egg gently. After the mature egg is ready and the sperm is collected, the insemination step can be performed. In this step, the egg and sperm are mixed in the lab for the fertilization process. Both will be stored in a special container. The sperm with low motility will be injected directly into the egg. The step can be continued to the embryo transfer. In this step, one or more of the fertilized egg will be put into the woman's uterus after three to five days of egg retrieval process. A thin tube will enter the uterus through the cervix. This process is not painful and will be done in the doctor's office or fertility clinic. During the first 8 to 10 weeks after the embryo transfer, the woman may take progesterone hormone pills as it is essential for the pregnancy. The pregnancy will happen if the fertilized egg or embryo implants in the lining of the uterus. Like all of the Asians in the world, they all have pros and cons. What are the pros and cons of IVF? Firstly, let's talk about the advantages. This method is very useful for women with blocked or damaged fallopian tubes. By doing the in vitro fertilization, the ovary doesn't need to travel along the fallopian tubes to get to the uterus for the implantation process. Therefore, the chance of fertilization will be increased. This method also helps patients with a low ovarian reserve. The possibility for the eggs to be fertilized by the sperm using IVF will be increased. Hence, 
the reduced number of eggs would not be a major problem. The same things can be done with male with a low sperm count. Numerous sperms can be obtained to be used for in vitro fertilization. Another advantage of in vitro fertilization can be used by the polycystic ovary syndrome. Polycystic ovary syndrome is the excessive reduction of androgen hormones which will cause the ovary to produce an egg full of liquid sex. The defect in the egg would cause the egg to not well developed and fail to be released. The last but not least, this treatment is useful for those who are suffering from endometriosis. Endometriosis is a condition when the womb lining grows outside the womb. This IVF method is expensive and may need more than one cycle of treatment before they succeed, which might be unbeneficial for some couples. This is naturally varies in women. The side effects may come and cause ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome or OHSS. Fortunately, the use of fewer or no drugs in natural and mild IVF cycles decreased or eliminated the risk of OHSS. In IVF treatments, the result of a more than one embryo put back into the uterus and this leads to a higher likelihood of multiple pregnancy. There is an increased chance of premature labor, miscarriage, and infant health problems with multiple pregnancy. It is important for all fertility clinics to have rubber single embryo transfer policies to avoid the risk of multiple pregnancy. The risk of an ectopic pregnancy doubles to 1 until 3%, particularly in women with damaged fallopian tubes. The last thing is about the ethical issues. The idea of selecting some embryos and potentially discarding others may not sit well with everybody. If you are uncomfortable with the creation of multiple embryos, we can support your choice by using natural cycle IVF or by freezing additional eggs rather than fertilizing them to create embryos. IVF is a remarkable technology for those who have difficulties with pregnancy. This is the end of Talking Taboo. We hope to see you next time, and remember, developmental biology is always here to guide you.